I guess, uh, you know, some of my older work has been, and I think still my current work deals with sort of this idea of um, fabricated family narratives. So my parents are both um, immigrants from Taiwan and Hong Kong. And when they came over, um, they brought with them very little. And as a kid growing up and also as an adult now, they don't really share that many um, family stories with me. Um, not because I think they don't, not because they don't want to or, or because of any sort of trauma or anything that happened in the past, but really I think it's just about um, their kind of feeling about living in the present and looking forward into the future. And so this sort of lack of a kind of cohesive family history has really inspired a lot of my work all the way up until now, this sort of idea about this sort of piecing together of memories and stories and narratives. So um, through my sort of lack of a kind of a cohesive chronology for my family that goes back even before my parents, um, I've been really interested in sort of any kind of lineage or orange, origin narratives and that's what I work through a lot and I've been, in my work I, I kind of seek out already um, sort of constructed, pre-constructed modes of storytelling and um, visual ways to kind of create narratives. So in, in, in previous work I've worked with heraldry or um, totem pole structures um, to kind of point to this idea of like creating and constructing for me what for what for me is sort of an imagined history because I don't have that concrete sense of what my actual history is. So um, I guess, you know, thinking about my family does kind of come into the work a lot. Um, and I think, you know, in some way it relates to my interest in printmaking and specifically screen printing, this idea of sort of layering images on top of one another and, and how um, that can kind of mirror this way that I'm sort of layering and um, kind of piling different references and different family stories and different family histories and fake family histories and fake you know, family stories combined with like kind of pop cultural references. Um, I think that's part of what draws me to, to her making. That's yeah, I mean, I've done some research in the past a little bit about fields of psychology where, you know, um, this idea that, that our sense of identity and our sense of self is sort of a malleable structure, that it's not, that it's constantly being formulated and reformulated and manipulated and adjusted, um, that, that who we think we are or who we believe ourselves to be based on a history or, or a genealogy or origin is, is perhaps not the most truest, truest self that we are, that it's like through our current past and potentially future experiences that we're kind of crafting our sense of self and identity constantly and that we're, it's being manipulated on a second by second basis based on what we're experiencing. So, um, and I think that is something that I work with a lot that, you know, that our sense of self can be constructed, which is kind of what I'm doing in a playful and humorous way because that's, that's, that's the kind of work that I enjoy looking at and enjoy making. But um, kind of a poking fun at, at, at what is actually true and what is, you know, the differences between fact and fiction. Our, the way that our family is structured or our memories, you know, they're not locked into place, that, um, that they're always changing, right? And so we have these ideas and thoughts about who we are or what we remember, but that they, they, they're not always the same. You think about something one day, you might remember something bright and shiny in one corner of the muck of your mind, and then the next day, you think about that same thing again and some other dark element pops up, you know, so yeah, yeah. it's, um, it's, you know, and I, that's, that's something that has sustained my practice for a long time, and, and I'm also interested in um, pop culture, too, and how we sort of recollect and sort of um, idealize and kind of hold up on a pedestal certain images that are sort of seared into our, our memory. Exactly, yeah, I, you know, because in a lot, since some of my older work, you know, I, I definitely came up on questions about, you know, is it important to you that the viewers fully understand, you know, these personal, personal symbols and images and icons that you're using? And to me, it's not super 
you know, in some of this kind of crazy manipulated images, it's not completely um, necessary for the viewer to exactly understand exactly where this image came from. More about that they, like just what you said, that they kind of recognize something in it and that they can relate, that there's some sort of universality to, to the images or the way that the images are put together, and that they start to formulate their own kind of experience with the image. And that they have, to, I mean, I'm really kind of just trying to encourage people to look a little closer. And, and by that, I don't mean just close proximity to the piece, but you know, I want people to kind of step away from it too, but to kind of spend more time with an image um, or perhaps an experience or a memory. That type of